Hey everybody, this is Steam from PopCultureMaven.com. We're back with this week's new comic book reviews. And it's uh, a pretty decent sized week. Uh, we got uh, three uh, uh, graphic novels that came out. A uh, couple of original ones and uh, one that's a reprint, but ha is... I'm very excited about, very excited about. So let's get let's get going on this. Uh, first up, we have Prez setting a uh, dangerous precedent graphic novel written by Mark Russell with artwork by Ben Caldwell uh, and then Dominic Stanton and additional inks by Sean Parsons. Uh, I'm very excited about this book. I was a really big fan of it when it came out. Uh, this Now, this reprints all the Mark Russell uh, Prez material. So uh, reprints issues one through six, uh, and then the backup uh, story that was in the the short story that was in Catwoman Election Night, which was uh, the first story was terrible, but the press was great. And then uh, there's a brand new uh, short story written by Russell with artwork by Ben Caldwell. Uh, this was part. This originally was a part of the DCU uh, initiative that was kind of a dismal failure uh, sales wise. Uh, quality wise, there was actually some good books. So Prez obviously being the best of the bunch. I also was a big fan of the Bizarro, uh, uh, miniseries, but, uh, this was Mark Russell's first comic book work. And, uh, it really, so, so basically what it is, is, uh, this, this girl, she works at a, a hot dog place and these guys film her and she, they, while they're filming her, they convince her to to do a certain angle, and she she gets her hair in the the fryer, and she's she's termed corn dog girl, and so what it is is she ends up uh, because of her popularity on like YouTube, uh, you know, and social media, she becomes president. So she, uh, there, it's a lot of social commentary, and of course, this was. Um, you know, it's it's interesting because even though it's fictional, it it there's a lot of you know, kind of real things that sadly could happen and have sadly happened in, in politics in some respects. Uh, but it really, it, it this book was really, really amazing. I'm really glad that not only DC has reprinted this, uh, I they put it in the uh, the 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 smaller young adult format. Uh, so the only that that's my only disappointment in the fact that you don't really get to see uh, Ben Caldwell's gorgeous artwork. You know, more in a bigger you know the normal comic size. But I'm glad that they reprinted it. Uh, I think the format is actually a good idea. Uh, mostly because I think uh, this would really work well with the teen audience and anybody. I, I can't recommend this book enough. I, I've been a big fan of this since day one. And you all know that Mark Russell's just gotten better since then. But this is really, honestly, it's really some of his best work. Uh, and considering it was like his first work, uh, this is really good. And I'm really glad that DC also gave them a chance to do, I don't want to say they really wrapped it up, but they kind of put a, a good, uh, you know, bit of an ending on this story because originally it was supposed to go 12 issues. Uh, they never got to do the back six. So in some ways, the two short stories kind of somewhat uh, tie up some loose ends in that, that was uh, set up in the first six issues. So I really recommend this book. Uh, this is a must buy and it's a really good deal. It's only uh, $17. So uh, you really can't beat that. Uh, next up, we have Barda, original graphic novel, writ written and drawn by uh, Ngozi uh, Yukazu. Uh, I hope I got that right. Apologies if I didn't. Uh, so what this is, is really her, it's not Barda's origin, but it kind of is. It's really the story of how she met Scott, uh, Mr. Miracle, and how uh, she she was part of the Female Furies and Granny uh, Goodness. And it really is a wonderful, a wonderful book. I'm really, ex I was really excited about it because I read the preview on the free comic book day. I'm hoping to do a more in-depth of that and in some other uh, DC uh, young adult books uh, soon. Uh, it's just, it's really tough on time, but I really liked Bart a lot and really uh, was well worth picking up this week. Really liked it. Uh, next up, we have Karate Prom, written and drawn by Kyle Starks. Uh, so here's here's the, the the pitch on the elevator pitch. Don the Dragon Wilson Jones is the finest fighter Benjamin Harris High School has ever produced. But when he enters the ring against Lincoln High Sam Stedman, it's Levitt first knockout. Uh, it's it's it, it is really a wild book. Once again, it's it's really I'm a huge Carl Starks fan. 
I really like this this book a lot. I lo I love his art style. He's he's really become more known as a writer. He's written Peacemaker uh, and later on uh, Pine and Merrimack. He's written a bunch of stuff. Uh, and also this week, uh, the, the trade paperback of his Rock Candy Mountain came out, which is really wonderful. I read it when it originally came out. Uh, but but Karate Prom is really awesome. And it, you have a choice of getting hardcover or softcover. Of course, I got the hardcover. I love hardcovers. But uh, this is really a wild book. It's really a lot of fun. And it's even uh, it brings back prom memories. Or even if you didn't go to prom, it gives you like good memories. And then it throws karate in. But definitely, I don't want to really give too much away. But it's a really wild book. And uh, once again, hopefully I'll give it a separate, uh, really want to review it by itself. Uh, so now to the regular uh, comics this week. First up, The Ultimates, number one, written by uh, Dennis Camp, uh, with artwork by Juan uh, uh, Fringer, or Fringy. Uh, so what this really is, is the, the, that the maker has changed this world where superheroes, it, it, what it was was Tony Stark, quote unquote destroyed things and now everybody hates superheroes but it was really Tony Stark trying to fix things with the maker so uh this is uh so these the heroes are Iron Lad which is uh Howard Stark his son uh Captain America Doom Reed Richards uh Thor and Sif they're trying to so they've gone six months ahead of time in time to try to, you know, fix what happened with the maker destroying and, you know, setting up the heroes to take the fall. And so they try to create heroes within the, because they can't go back in time to, because the maker has put a wall, a time wall, I guess you could say. Uh, and so now they have to try to find a new group of Avengers is really what this story is. Um, you know, I liked it okay. It was it was it was fine for what it was, but it was just kind of like this is a nice story. This is an Avenger story with like a different twist. And I think the thing is with like this and the Black Panther, it, it's just more of like kind of taking the same thing and slightly changing it, but it doesn't really feel for me, very different. Um, I, I will say it's it's very good for new readers in the sense of they explain the maker and what he's done and blah 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 and all that stuff. But but it just was like it was it was fine for what it was. It just didn't really grab me beyond what an average Marvel book would be. And and I'm not knocking it. It's just it's kind of average. I I think that it's it's decent, but it's not. It it didn't really. Um, you know, bring anything new to the table. It's just kind of like a twist on that. I think the the only old the the only one of the new Ultimates that I've really really been impressed by is Peach Momoko's X Men because she's really taken that and really done something uniquely different. Where I think um, the Spider Man one has has been good. Um, I think that's the next best one, but the but this kind of falls in with the Black Panther, where it just seems like okay, this is like the Avengers, but uh, with a slightly different twist. So, um, I will say, uh, Fringy's art's nice. There were a number of times where I kind of felt he was a little uh, lenient, uh, kind of skimpy on the backgrounds, uh, but but overall it was it was pretty decent you know, artwork wise, but overall, I think it was just a pretty average book and it's, it's not great. It's not terrible. It's just kind of there. Uh, next up we have, uh, the boy wonder number two written, written and drawn by Junie Ba. Uh, so this issue, uh, cause da Damien's kind of out on his own. So he's, he, he's, uh, gotten in touch with, uh, Jason Todd, the red hood to try to help him solve the mystery that's going on in Gotham. Uh, because Batman's out of out of town, so uh, J uh, Damien's like, oh, you know, this is like my first job. I'll, I'll go do it. And so, really, what this issue really kind of comes about is both of them kind of having to deal with their personal demons, and that that really is r quite interesting. What uh, Bob does with this in the story, where it's it, it kind of has some action, and he and Jason. And Damien do team up to kind of help with help Damien try to figure out what's going on in Gotham. But it really has to do with kind of both of theirs, you know, how they they came to be Robin and or in the case of Jason, how he became Robin, then became the Red Hood. And it's really a really uh, interesting psychological type story 
And I really like that. And of course, Bob's artwork is really just kinetic and amazing. Uh, and, and like I said, I like what he did with the second issue because he could have just had kind of more action and, okay, here's a Robin story. But I love the fact that he decided to do something really different and something with introspective of the characters. And it really is wonderful. And then once again, I really want to point out his artwork is amazing and it has really this kinetic energy, even when they're just standing around talking. It's just it's a really gorgeous book. The story is amazing. I'm really excited to see where he goes with it from here with this because of the second issue that it's not just, oh, here's Robin going on a mission that there's a lot more and it's a much deeper story than I even anticipated. And I thought he did a really good job on the first issue. The second issue really, really was impressive. Very, very good. A must pick up this week. Uh, next up we have Scarlet number one written by Kelly Thompson with artwork by Marco Ferrar uh, Ferrari. Uh, so this is the next of the uh, Energon universe books. And so what it is, is uh, Sheena Scarlet O'Hara uh, is, uh, inf is she's infiltrating the, uh, clan, uh, a, a sock age. Uh, it's a Japanese kind of mafia that's, that's come up and she's, they've kidnapped these girls. So she's trying to, you know, she ends, she's just there to like infiltrate and find out what's going on. And that's her mission. She's not supposed to get involved. And what it is, is they're auctioning these women off. And so she, she gets involved. All right. She pretty much kicks all their asses. And, but we find out that she's actually kind of looking for her partner, Jinx. And we find out that Jinx has been undercover going into the uh, Asakage uh, mafia, basically. But she, uh, her and Scarlet have this like um, secret code and it tells her not to go look for her. And of course she does go look for her. She goes on a mission, uh, kind of an undercover mission from, from the, not from the government, but from somewhere else we, we don't quite know but it, let's be honest it's probably gi joe and so so she ends up finding jinx but things don't quite turn out the way she wants uh and we're left with quite an interesting um uh cliffhanger which i don't want to give away but i really like this book i like uh how uh thompson really set up set up the story here but i love how she had you know kind of action at the beginning that that way you get a taste of what scarlet can do but also really going into her life and and her 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 relationship with jinx um that really really sealed the deal on this book i mean it was it was just a really solid first issue got everything off to a good start uh, explain things, but kept the, the momentum of the story going. And, uh, Ferrari's artwork is really, really nice. I really like the, um, uh, the artwork and it really just hit all the points of Thompson's script. I really like this book. The Energon universe has really been a big surprise. And, uh, this is another one to definitely pick up this week. Uh, next up we have Space Ghost number two, uh, written by David Pipos with artwork by Jonathan Lau. So uh, this issue follows up the first issue where Space Ghost uh, rescues uh, Jan and Jace uh, uh, from the, the, the attack on uh, their, their father's lab. So he takes them back to the ghost planet. So we kind of learn about that. And we also learn what, uh, with, this is interesting, what Pipos has done. He's created an origin of space ghost uh, because in the in the original cartoon there was remember he was just space ghost there was jan and jason blip and they just went on adventures it was very simple and so what he's done is he's explained what has happened to him i don't want to give it away i'm trying to be non-spoilery on this and uh why he has this connection with jan and jace and also so so it also really comes down to where he, not only is he rescue them, but he's going to teach them how to be heroes, which we know that they will be. But uh, people is just setting it up, and there's some good action here with a a monster uh, 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 a monster that attacks uh, the ghost planet. So he mixes like uh, exposition with action, which is he does a good balance in here. And I once again, I really have to point out that Lau's artwork is really really nice. Uh, Dynamite has really kind of stepped up the game as far as getting good artists on the book. Used to be they were really 
writer centric, which is a good thing, but then sometimes the art was not quite there. So uh, I really have to praise Lau. He's done a really nice job on the artwork. Um, and I know there's multiple covers, but I'm really sold on the Michael Cho covers because uh, he really captures that classic Alex Toth, you know, Hanna Barbera. Uh, uh, in his covers, and th those are the ones I'm going to get uh, from now on. But uh, there's plenty of uh, covers to choose from. But um, I, I have to say, as a huge Space Ghost fan, I'm pretty impressed with what Pipos and Lau are doing here. And I think this second issue really does a nice job of building on that first issue and moving the story forward. So uh, I'm, I'm digging it so far, and uh, I have to give uh, Pipos props that... Uh, he has not disappointed me, and I'm like I said, I'm a really huge spa original Space Ghost fan, so um, definitely continue to pick this up. Uh, next up, we have Beyond the Pale, number one, uh, writ written by Christopher uh, Emgard, with artwork by Tomas uh, Ar Ar Aria. Uh, so what this is, is um, that uh, there's a war correspondent, uh, Hedda Sawyer, is uh, going to Vietnam, to uh because she's looking for there's a disproportional um um group of black men that are have gone missing in in this war that like they're just mysteriously disappearing so she's gone to vietnam to kind of figure out what's going on and why basically soldiers are disappearing and that's a setup with with this story um, and it, it really was quite interesting. It was, it was really interesting because later on we're going to, I'm going to review Get Fury, which is another Vietnam story, but this one's more, I, I would say a little bit more reality based, even though it's like a fictional story, it definitely felt more like what the war was like in Vietnam, where, uh, Fury is more of a superhero version of that in some respects. Uh, but I, but I really did like this. I thought it was a really good setup. Uh, the, you know, there's kind of the, you know, the quote unquote, like murder mystery type, you know, uh, theory behind it. But I, I love the fact that in, in guard, in guard, uh, did a nice job of, you know, setting up the character, setting up the situation. Uh, we get to know, uh, Sawyer really quite well. And that, that's a big plus because it's really her, her story of this story. And uh, I was, like I said, I was kind of surprised. And then uh, our Aria's artwork is is really, it's, it's nice. It, it does a really good job of, you know, because a lot of it's really people stand around talking. So once again, if you can do that well, then you've, you've done a good job. So I think it's worth checking out. I, I was really kind of surprised by this. Uh, next up, My Adventures with Superman, number one, written by Joseph Campbell, with artwork by Pablo M. Collar. Uh, so I, I will first say that I've never seen, uh, the television show that this sh show is based on. So I'm going in kind of cold, but, um, uh, we, we, you know, obviously without explaining too much Campbell, uh, you know, Clark is in Metropolis, uh, Lois and uh, Jimmy know his secret. And it's, uh, so really the, the, the crux of this first issue story is that Clark, uh, this is going to be his first Christmas away from, uh, Smallville. And so Lois and Jimmy have taken upon themselves to make it his best, you know, his first Christmas in Metropolis, the best ever. But, uh, of course, as they try to secretly do this at the Daily Planet and uh, they throw Clark off guard by having uh, the, the other staff keep him busy so he can't hear them uh, with their planning, that the uh, Daily Planet gets attacked by Parasite and uh, it's not the parasite we know. It's more of a parasite suit. Uh, and then there's some sort of government, like men in black thing uh, going on about this suit. Uh, I, I did like it. I, you know, once again, I haven't seen the show. I, I'm just basing it on the comic. I think this is going to be more for fans of the, of the, uh, the book, but I will say, considering I've never seen the television show, the book's nice. It, it does its job. It's a good all ages book, which I think is always a benefit, uh, to the comic comics in general. I think it's, it's great to get new readers in there and you know, it's a nice little story. The art, uh, colors artwork is really nice. Kind of captures that animation style of the show. And you know, it's a nice book. I, you know, it didn't blow me away, but it was a good solid, it was a good solid read. And I think for fans of the show, or once again, it's, it's something you can give to a younger person and they would enjoy too. 
that's always a plus. So in that respect, I think it's worth checking out uh, if you're a fan of the show or looking for a book for a younger reader. Uh, next up, we have Lilo and Stitch, number four, written by Greg Pak, with artwork by Guliana uh, Gia Camino. Uh, so this wraps up really the first storyline, where uh, what it is is that the Cluster Sovereign is trying to capture, well, they want DNA for Stitch because they want to use that DNA to, to build, you know, indestructible robots. And so Stitch has been running away from them and he's gone to different, he's gone to Australia and uh, this issue, he goes to India. And so what it is, is he crashes into these, these kids making a monster movie. So uh, the, the two robots that are chasing Stitch are not quite in like kill mode anymore and so they they get them and stitch to help make the finish their movie their monster movie and then of course the 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 head of the uh the sovereign comes and and tries to destroy stitch or get his dna and then lilo or uh yeah lilo and the gang come to the rescue and it really it wraps up the first storyline really nice i i'm a huge fan of the movie i i have enjoyed what pack and uh gia camino have done with this book i you know it's light it's it's airy it's fun uh it, it does feel like lilo and stitch is really which i think is the most important part of it uh it's a fun book it's a nice all ages book and especially if you if you know if you have a younger uh, fans of Lilo and Stitch, it's it's perfectly, you know, it's good stuff. Um, you know, it's not going to convert you to Lilo and Stitch, and it's not going to, you know, it didn't blow me away, but it was a good, solid story with nice artwork. So I, I enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, next up, we have Get Fury, number two, written by Garth Ennis, with artwork by Jason Burroughs. Uh, so so uh, G Fury's been captured, uh, by you know the 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 Vietnam uh, Vietnamese, and so he's been he's he's going to be taken to um, Hanoi for interrogation. So they've hired they've gotten Frank Castle to go in and assassinate him. And we learn in this issue why this is all happening because Fury has discovered that all, kind of the dirty secrets of what the CIA has been doing in Vietnam with drugs and and money and stuff. And so Fury has found that out. That's why they sent Frank Castle in. So Frank doesn't obviously know this, but I think as we go on, I think Frank's going to discover kind of what's going on. Uh, and uh, he he's, like I said, uh, Frank's in, in Hanoi. He's undercover as kind of a Russian agent because the Russians are were helping the, uh, uh, the Vietnamese uh, to fight the U.S., and so really the, the big thing in this issue is really the reveal of, you know, kind of the dirty secrets of the CIA and how this is playing into the story. And I like what Ennis is doing here. There's definitely, it's of its period. There's definitely some uh, uh, non-politically correct uh, stuff going on in this. But once again, it's set during that time. So it's appropriate for that. But, you know, a bit of a warning for some people. It's not politically correct at all. And and it shouldn't be because once again you're basing it in a time period that is different from today. Uh, I really like Burroughs' artwork; it's really nice. I'm really digging this story; it's a lot of fun. I really was initially like, okay, the Punisher and 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 Nick Fury, but what Ennis is doing here kind of makes sense for the story, and I'm 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 liking what they're doing. So uh, definitely still worth checking out. Uh, next up, we have Pine and Merrimack, number five, written by Kyle Starks, with artwork by Fran Galan. So this wraps up the story. So what it is is Parker and Leanna have discovered this kind of cult in this, this small town because uh, a, they were sent on a, a girl was kidnapped, so they kind of followed the trail. And so we saw last issue, a bit of a spoiler if you haven't read it, but uh, Parker was killed, so, you know, Leanna is just, you know, basically falling apart uh, because of her past with her sister missing. And then, you know, her, her finding, you know, she was dead and that's how she became a detective. And so she goes back to basically not, not necessarily kill the, the, the cult, but, you know, kind of shut them down. But I will say, I don't want to really give anything away, but the ending is very twilight zone. That's all I'm going to say. And it really, like blew me away. I was really impressed with the way Kyle Starks, because once again, it got to a certain point. You're like, how are you going to really wrap this up? 
where, you know, is everybody going to die? I don't know. And then there's the Twilight Zone twist. And I don't want to say anymore, but I really thought that that was absolutely genius. Uh, Glenn's artwork is really gorgeous in this book. I really like this. It, it had a good, solid beginning, middle, and end, which is what it needed to be. And uh, it was just a really interesting story and had a lot of twists and turns that I never expected. But, you know, Starks is such a really good writer. And then, like I said, Glenn's artwork is really nice. I really love this book. I know it's going to be hard to find the first few issues, but I know there'll be a trade of it coming out. Definitely pick up the trade of this book. It was really a must-read book. Next up, we have Shazam number 12, written by Josie Campbell, uh, with artwork by Mike Norton and Emmanuel Lupacino. Excuse me. So uh, this... Uh, finishes up uh, Campbell's first storyline, uh, The Moving Day. And so what it is, is we find out that when the, the, the captain is actually in the Rock of Eternia while Billy is Billy, and then when he says Shazam, they come together. But we also find out that they're, they're separate identities, and there's been this secret of Cap has been doing, the captain has been doing stuff behind Billy's back. And uh, the kids find out about it, and they tell Billy... And then there's also the Billy finding his mother finally. And so we find out that because of the, 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 the fighting between Cap and Billy has um, made a magical leak in the Rock of Eternia where uh, the different dim magical dimensions are kind of like can come into each other. And that is not going to turn out well. So in a way, the, the Campbell does wrap up the storyline for this, but does set up another storyline for the, for the next issue. Uh, Norton and Lupacino's artwork is really nice. They've done a really nice job. I just, it, it, Campbell's doing a nice job on the, the story, but it's been really tough since you're following Mark Wade and Dan Mora. That's a tough act to follow. And I think this this first storyline was kind of on the safe side. It was nice, but it really didn't necessarily grab me. I liked it, but I didn't quite love it. So we'll kind of see where Campbell takes this ne next one because I really enjoyed her Mary Marvel uh, miniseries. But I, like I said, I'm liking it. I'm just not loving Shazam right now. So we'll kind of see. I'll still give it uh, e kind of one more storyline to see where it goes. I, I I think if you're a fan of Shazam, I, I think it's worth checking out. I like a lot of ideas that she's doing. I'm just not, I, I think maybe it's the pacing or something, but I, I don't think it's not turned into a train wreck. It's just kind of like, okay, let's see where she's really going to go. Because once again, this is only her first storyline. So she's kind of still taking threads from what Wade and Mora did to, to, now she needs to really kind of build her own story. So that's kind of where we're at on the book. I'm liking it, just not quite loving it right now. Uh, next up, we have Mad Number 1 Facsimile Edition, uh, written and drawn by Harvey Kurtzman, Jack Davis, Wally Wood, Bill Elder, and John Severine. Uh, so this re completely reprints the entire first issue of Mad, because Mad started off, a lot of people don't know, it started off as a comic book. Uh, and it was uh, published by EC Comics because they were getting to the point where uh, they were getting in kind of trouble for their horror comics. And so they kind of needed an outlet for humor. And Harvey Kurtzman, did, you know, came up with the idea of doing a, a humor book. And so Bill Gaines, the publisher of EC Comics, said, hey, let's go for it. And so you had literally some of the best talent in the comic industry uh, that were doing horror. They also really knew how to do uh, parodies and comedy. And it really is, this is a real treat on many different levels. I mean, you get to see, you know, gorgeous, you know, Davis, Wood, Elder, and Severine artwork. And, uh, you know, Harvey's great stories. The cover's amazing by Harvey Kurtzman. And you get to see the ads of the time. That's always, you know, really great because the original... Uh, was published in uh, 1956, I think. Uh, I could be wrong on the date, but it was definitely in the 50s when the, the first issue was published. And uh, it really is a treat, and it's so worth the $4. It's it's a it's a, a trip back to to the, uh, the beginning of Mad, basically. So well worth picking up this week. Definitely a big win. And finally this week, we have Batman and Scooby-Doo Mysteries number... 
five. Uh, written by Amanda D- Debert with artwork by Dario uh, Brazella. Uh, so what's interesting about this issue is it doesn't really, it, it has a villain, which I won't give away, but it, it really, uh, what it is, the villain frames the Scooby gang for a robbery. And so Batman has to lock him up. So that's kind of a neat twist. And I like what Dilbert did here, kind of told a different story instead of just like, oh, here's, here's Joker, or Mad Hatter or whatever. She actually kind of wrote a, a story that has to do with them solving a mystery of them being framed, which was really quite interesting. And uh, Brazella's artwork is really nice. He really captures that animation style in both Batman and Scooby. Uh, he's He's been on and off artist. I'm really a big fan of uh, the way he draws the book and the characters. And uh, once again, this is a really great all ages book. I love it as adult. It's a great book for kids. Uh, I'm glad that the, the DC still continues to, to to publish this book because it's just it's a real treat every month. They're really they're simple stories, but they're a lot of fun. They always have nice artwork, and it, they're just well worth picking up. So uh, definitely, definitely, uh, always a must buy for me every month. I love this book, and I I really you love it. It's a one and done, they're all one and done stories, which is always great. You're always satisfied, and it's uh, they're just wonderful to get. Uh, that's going to do it this week. Thanks for watching. Uh, as always, public service announcement. I get all my comics at Pulp Fiction Comics, Long Beach, California. Ryan Skinner runs a uh, he's the owner runs a great store. There's Annie, there's Wendy, there's uh, Derek who runs the socials. Uh, it's a really great comic store. Uh, they have a pull service, and if you order enough books a month, you get a discount on your month uh, your your monthly books. It offers discounts on trades and graphic novels. Has a really huge manga selection. Annie runs their manga selection, and she does a great job on that. Uh, he has lots of deals and stuff. Um, he has a, a discount area for for uh, you you know gently used uh, books or new books sometimes. Uh, so there's some really great deals in there, but it's a really good comic shop. And uh, uh, definitely, if you're in the Long Beach area, definitely check it out. It's it's really, it's uh, not only my store, but it's a really good store. And uh, definitely always support your local comic shop. They're the backbone of the industry. They have to buy books before you get them. So make sure you pick up, uh, if you've ordered stuff, make sure you pick it up on a regular basis. Uh, and, and, and you know, don't leave them in the lurch. Uh, uh, always buy what you, you, you can afford. And uh, make sure you pick it up on a timely basis. And, and like I said, because they have to pay for it ahead of time. And as always, we end our show with be kind. Be kind to each other. Kindness doesn't cost anything. But really also be kind to yourself. Uh, taking care of yourself is really important. I know times are tough. I get it. Uh, things are just tough, but being kind to others and being kind to yourself uh, not only is good for you, but good for other people. And uh, we just need to be much more kind to each other. Uh, I know we all have difference of opinions and stuff, but that doesn't preclude you from being kind to other people. And like I said, please take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. That's going to do it this week. Thanks for watching. Uh, Thanks for all the new subscribers and comments. It's really great. Thanks for thanks for watching. Please like and share our, our videos and uh, uh, spread the word. Uh, like I said, I, I love I love comics and I love reviewing them to help you figure out what to buy and maybe what's not worth buying. Uh, but uh, thanks for watching and we'll do it again next week. Uh, this is Stephen from PopCultureMaven.com signing off. Thanks. Thanks again. We'll see you next week. Bye bye.